thanks to Brilliant for supporting this video. Because you watch Bizarre Beasts, Brilliant is offering you a 30-day free trial and 20% off an annual premium subscription at brilliant.org slash bizarre beasts. This is a thing called a tadpole shrimp. It is neither tadpole nor shrimp. It's a different kind of crustacean that comes from a lineage that first appeared hundreds of millions of years ago. And they've looked pretty much the same the whole time. Something about being a small, three-eyed, horseshoe crab-looking thing just works. And while they look pretty cute from the top, underneath is a different story. You could tell me they inspired the facehuggers from the Alien franchise, and I would not be surprised. And their superpower is waiting. Which makes sense, I guess, for an aquatic animal that can live in the desert. If you want to support the channel, the Bizarre Beasts Pin Club is open for subscriptions from today through February 12th. Sign up now, and the first pin you will get will be one of these weird little guys. Scientists know these strange critters as members of the order Notostrica, which comes from the Greek words for back and shell. And there is just one single family in that order, Triopsidae, with triops meaning three eyes. That family contains only two genera of tadpole shrimp, and it can be very hard to tell the difference between the species within each genus. And I would be perfectly content to call these little guys three-eyed back shells, because they are both of those things. Though, the third eye is more of a basic light sensing organ than a real eye. But what they are not is shrimp, in spite of their common names being tadpole shrimp, dinosaur shrimp, and shield shrimp. And yes, I realize I'm kind of stuck calling them tadpole shrimp here, because three-eyed back shells might be more accurate, but it's a terrible rebrand. Anyway, the whole point of the Bizarre Beast channel is that we explore what makes animals weird to us. And I think calling these little crustaceans any kind of shrimp is really doing them a disservice, because it makes them seem much more normal and familiar than they actually are. Without getting too far into the taxonomic weeds, of what even is a shrimp, I'd say you can recognize a shrimp by these features. They have long bodies that are flattened from side to side, whip-like antenna, eyes on stalks, a tail that ends in a fan, and ten legs, some of which are skinny and some of which are modified into swimmerettes. And tadpole shrimp just don't. It's actually kind of strange to me that someone saw them and thought, Shrimp! Instead, they have broad, ovalish shells at the front of their bodies, a relatively skinny tail with two long, thin projections at the tip, up to 70 pairs of legs in some species, and eyes that are not on stalks. I think they really look more like mini horseshoe crabs, but it would also be misleading to call them that, because they're even less closely related to tadpole shrimp than true shrimp are. And if you've heard of these little weirdos before, it might be because Triops crashed the arts festival known as Burning Man in 2023. Burning Man takes place every year in the Black Rock Desert in Nevada, right around the last week of August or the first week of September. Now, when you think of a desert, you might picture rolling sand dunes, or big cactuses, or if you're really into deserts, Antarctica. Because deserts can be cold, too, as long as they don't get more than 25 centimeters of rain per year. But the Black Rock Desert is a different kind of landscape. It's a playa, a semi-arid, windswept ancient lake bed covered in fine sediment. It's really hot in the summer, with temperatures regularly hitting 37 degrees Celsius or more during the day, before dipping to 7 degrees Celsius at night, and it gets down to freezing in the winter. And it only rains an average of 17 centimeters per year. But aquatic animals still live there. Which seems pretty weird to me. And it only works because tadpole shrimp are just really good at waiting. Or at least their eggs are. See, tadpole shrimp are found worldwide, but they generally only live in environments where pools of water are temporary and seasonal. And this means their eggs have to be able to survive the pools they were laid in drying up and somehow make it to the next time conditions are favorable, which in some species can be up to 10 years later. While they wait, the eggs dry out and can survive pretty extreme environmental conditions, like the temperature swings on the playa, as 
well as literally being eaten and excreted by animals. Then, when it finally rains, like it did during Burning Man, the eggs hatch and the juveniles mature really quickly, ready to reproduce and start the whole thing over again before their pool dries up. But the thing is, having a life cycle that's kind of unpredictable like this can have some weird consequences for reproduction. Being entirely dependent on specific environmental conditions means that there's no guarantee that they'll happen again, or if they do, that there will be suitable mates around. What's the point of your eggs being able to hang out for a literal decade if, once they hatch, it's the end of your lineage anyway? Well. Tadpole shrimp reproduction has gotten wild as a way to deal with this. It can vary between species and even between populations of the same species. There can be equal numbers of males and females, lots of one sex and very few of the other, no males at all, or males that don't seem to contribute genetically to their offspring. And in the populations with no males at all, the single sex that exists can either produce both eggs and sperm, or it can reproduce via parthenogenesis, essentially cloning itself from an unfertilized egg. If you thought our episode on aphids had some weird reproductive shenanigans going on, I'd say tadpole shrimp have them beat. But given the particular environmental pressures tadpole shrimp have had to cope with, it makes a lot of sense that extreme reproductive flexibility has evolved. They have to pass on their genes somehow. And in that, they're just like every other organism that has evolved on our planet. Bizarre in a way that works for them. Along with our fantastic tadpole shrimp pins, we also have two new special things for you this month. First, because it's February, we've turned the art of some of our favorite beasts into valentines. And second, because at least for us, it is February in Montana, we've made a scarf! It has sea slugs on it! You can get the pins and the cards and the scarf and everything else at BizarreBeastShow.com. Tadpole shrimp live at the whims of the water cycle. Maybe this year they will swim around, and maybe next year they will just hang out as dry little eggs. They'll never have any real way to predict either outcome, but you can with the Explaining Variation course on Brilliant. This online course starts with correlation and then covers everything from linear regression to Simpson's paradox. And that's just one of the many courses you can explore with Brilliant, the online learning platform with thousands of interactive lessons in science, computer science, and math. Brilliant lets you learn anywhere at any time, and if you aren't sure what course to take, Brilliant has a quiz you can take when you sign up to be matched with content that fits your skill level and interest. You can try it for free for 30 days at brilliant.org slash bizarre beasts, or by clicking the link in the description down below. That link also gives you 20% off an annual premium Brilliant subscription. Thanks to Brilliant for supporting this episode of Bizarre Beasts. We mentioned in the video that it can be really hard to tell the difference between different species of tadpole shrimp in the same genus, but telling the two genera, Triops and Lepidurus, apart is actually much easier. It all comes down to the tail. Both kinds of tadpole shrimp have an elongated tail called a telson, which is just the final segments of the body of certain kinds of arthropods. At the end of the telson, they have two skinny, spine-like projections called caudal rami. And between those caudal rami, Lepidurus has a rounded plate-like structure, while Triops does not. 